afternoon. Now, where I grew up, in the southern part of this great country, we would call this a great getting up afternoon. And that is because we are here to celebrate. We are here to celebrate each of the graduates in my class of 2017. So my fellow graduates, you stayed the course. You did the work. And now comes the reward of receiving a degree from the University of Washington. I turn now to greet the Sister President, Anna Marie Corse. I acknowledge the regents, faculty, staff, students, alumni, and friends of this great public research university. A special greeting from the bottom of my heart to the families of today's graduates. You have stood by these women and men. You have believed in them when they weren't sometimes sure they believed in themselves. And some of you have been a human ATM <laughs> for your daughter, your son, your grandchild, your niece, nephew, spouse, or partner, or other kin. So, dear graduates, it won't be long now before you leave. But before you go, here is what I ask of you. Only three things. First, that you take care of yourselves. Secondly, that you take care of others. And thirdly, that you take special care to respect and celebrate the beauty and strength in human diversity that is found all over our country and our world. Now, when I ask you to take care of yourself, it is not a call for you to become egocentric, that is to only think of yourself or to become self-centered. But I am calling on you to take care of your minds, your bodies, and yes, your souls. You graduate today because you've completed different courses of study. And whether you go on to more formal education or not, I urge you to never stop learning. That is how you really take care of your mind. Indeed, when you have no more questions, when you're no longer curious about countless matters, then the best part of living is done. Albert Einstein once said, I have no special talent. I am only passionately curious. You, dear classmates, are living at a time when advances in medical science, combined with your own careful attention to healthy living, can lead to a very long life. And just as you need to take care of your physical selves, I must also urge you to take care of your souls. Now, one of the ways you can surely do that is to fall in love or 
continue to be in love with the arts, <laughs> music, dance, theater, the visual arts can help us to understand others and ourselves. Now, I know you can live without the arts, but you will not live well without them. Secondly, dear graduates, I urge you to not only take care of yourselves, you must take care of others. Now, where I grew up, these are the words that captured that responsibility. Listen, doing for others is just the rent you got to pay for your room on earth. Ellie Wiesel, who survived the Holocaust to become a global human rights activist, he said this, our lives do not belong to us alone. Our lives belong to those who need us the most. And one of my sheroes, remember now, for every hero in the world, there is at least one shero. One of my sheroes, the African-American educator, Dr. Mary McLeod Bethune, said each of us should go on and climb, go to the top. But, she said, you must lift others as you climb. Whatever is your chosen profession, please find the time to be of service to others. It may be serving as a big brother or big sister to that youngster who desperately needs you. Or you may volunteer in a soup kitchen or provide pro bono legal services or bring comfort to women who are in a shelter to escape from domestic violence. Our country and our world are calling on you, my classmates, to respond positively to these words of Dr. Martin Luther King. Life's most persistent and urgent question is, what are you doing for others. And finally, dear graduates, I ask this of you. Please continue to prepare yourselves to live in our highly diverse country and world. Now, I am aware that in 2015, the sister president of this great university launched a race and equity initiative with a challenge that University of Washington students, faculty, staff, take personal responsibility for addressing their own biases and improving this university's culture. This means that you have a head start on graduates in many other institutions who've not been engaged and challenged with such an initiative. Now, as you surely know, we are living in a peculiar, a particular period in our country and our world where there is simultaneously more awareness of how diverse we human beings are. And there is a resurgence of hateful rhetoric and violent actions against this diversity. Hear 
within our words that call on you and that call on me, words that call on all, on every single one of us in the world to acknowledge, respect, and celebrate human diversity. There is a Chinese proverb that says, women hold up half of the sky. Cesar Chavez, the Chicano farm worker and civil rights activist, said this, preservation of one's own culture does not require contempt or disrespect for other cultures. There is, there is a Plains American Indian proverb that says, give me knowledge so that I may have kindness for all. Helen Keller, the social activist who was deaf and blind said this, the highest result of education is tolerance. Hear these words of Audre Lord, the acclaimed African American lesbian poet. She said, it is not our differences that divide us. It, I, it is our inability to recognize, accept, and celebrate those differences. And then a saying of Muslim origin. It takes a lot of different flowers to make a bouquet. And so now, before I go, I once again ask of each of you, my classmates, that you take care of yourselves, that you take care of others, and that you take special care to respect and celebrate the diversity in our nation and our world. Not from the top, not from the middle, but from the bottom of my heart. Congratulations, class of 2017.